confirmed. A red alert in Montecito reveals Harry and Meghan have no ability to generate money. Hello friends, welcome to breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple, Harry and Meghan Markle, on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. It's time Harry and Meghan face the facts. They have absolutely no ability to generate money for themselves. They have proven themselves lazy, spoiled, entitled, untrustworthy, work shy, and disloyal, and will even sell out their own families for a few coins. Harry thinks he runs the show, but in reality, it's Meghan who calls all the shots, and it's backfired every single time on them. Everything they have touched, they have destroyed. They have completely failed to understand and appreciate the damage they have self-inflicted with their attacks on the British royal family, namely the Queen and Prince Philip in the last years of their lives after pretty much raising Harry. The hurt and embarrassment those two caused was unforgivable to the public. They will never be looked at the same as when they first announced their engagement. They have completely soiled their own brand with their cruelty, lies, and jealousy. They have not reached rock bottom yet. They're still flailing around, blaming everyone else for their multiple woes. And when I say rock bottom, I mean they've run through it all. Then we will see a reconciliation. Harry will have to return to the fold for an annual allowance and come to heel under the king. Now that they've been frozen out by the British royal family and basically everyone else of note, it's in their best interest to get regular jobs, downsize from the LA palace, and learn to live as Mr. and Ma Mrs. Mountbatten Windsor. They'll never amount to anything more in status now due to their own venomous actions against everyone they come in contact with. Without the grand titles of Duke and Duchess, they're nobodies, just average, totally unremarkable people. Harry's days of carefree polo and hers of cameras and red carpets are all but over for them. What I never understood is it was clear from the Spotify split that Netflix and Spotify pitch them ideas and they don't seem to take their advice. They've access to people like Tyler Perry, who is hardly a media slouch, with access to some of the best brains in the business and over a hundred million dollars in funding, they seem absolutely clueless outside moaning about having the small bedroom in Queen's Castle. One commenter said, I've been a fan of Tyler Perry's movies long before Megan was around. He created funny, wholesome movies, often with a Christian theme. I just cannot believe he fell for someone as patently destructive and nasty as Megan. Did he have a personal grudge against the British monarchy? If so, why? I'm also skeptical that someone as business savvy as he is would invite her to use his jet, home, and other facilities without somehow benefiting. And what's his current connection with them today? Rumor has it that he attended Lily's christening, but abruptly left right after he arrived. There's some sketchy stuff going on. Harry and Meghan's only skill is running their mouths, and they fail at that too. Can you imagine being 40-ish years old and having no real purpose in this world? They are empty shells with lips that flap utter nonsense that has zero value to serve the betterment of society. They have stolen the happiness and well-being of others to solely benefit themselves. Terrible human beings the two of them are. Their complete failure cannot come soon enough to rid the world of their negative toxicity. What they did to the royal family, especially the queen at her age, while in poor health was pretty unbelievable. But if they had decided to start working on their deals, much needed rom-coms according to Meghan, and a podcast longer than 12 episodes after the Oprah interview, and done genuine philanthropic work with little public fanfare, then they could have won the war against the royal family. Instead, they became fixated on petty rivalries against the British royal family, and specifically Catherine and William. Instead of destroying them, they won a few battles, but eventually lost the war in a massive way. I can't wait to see where they are in 10 years. There is one way they can determine if it's just haters causing their failures. Create a product. Without their name or press releases, they are involved, and if it still fails, it's not the haters. They could quietly make money. Their problem is they can't help but think we all need to know in their attempt to appear successful to everyone else. 
They could have taken the money for their cottage and bought multiple properties and made money from rentals. After their business is settled and successful, they possibly said something, but they wouldn't be able to help themselves. I really doubt Harry's going to be returned to the fold. You cannot just blow up a relationship and think you can walk back into it when it's convenient for you. Addicts the world over have found out that family members are done being victimized by you. Spouses have reached the point where they're done being played for a fool by spouses. If Charles decides to take Harry back into the fold, what happens when Charles dies? How would William refusing to support his brother be any different than Charles refusing to support his brother? How is it different than kicking Angela out of the home the queen promised she could remain in? There is no reason that a disgraced and ostracized Harry cannot live on 50,000 pounds like many Britons. He doesn't deserve free housing, food, staff, and security after dumping over not just the monarchy, but the country itself. It's at rock bottom. What goes around comes around. It has always been a truism because it's usually true. One commenter said, Personally, I would like to see them both brought back to the fold here in England, but in the gardener's cottage at the back of one of the wood sheds and on a short leash. I'm actually quite a nice and empathetic person, but I would like to see her humiliation in being forced to eke out a living as an agony aunt for some nondescript rag. Maybe go on, I'm a celeb big brother, etc., and get voted out in the first round. I think they should also get one of their many wishes, to live in, as Mr. and Mrs. Spencer. I know Madam probably thinks it's a noble name, but here in England, it's as common as muck. Not only that, the name Spencer is only second on the billing of the department store most of us buy our smalls. There's a massive difference between King Edward VIII and Harry. Edward VIII was king for virtually a year. As king, he inherited the immense personal wealth and private property portfolio of his father, George V. Obviously, when he abdicated, the Duchy of Lancaster went to the new monarch, and many of the properties, such as Buckingham Palace and Windsor, are owned by the crown. But he personally owned Sandringham and Balmoral and had considerable personal wealth. A financial settlement was agreed, whereby George VI bought Sandringham and Balmoral off Edward and paid for them with a yearly allowance. This was a massive financial drain on the monarchy. Edward also had other private wealth he had inherited as king, so he was wealthy and well provided for, but lived in extravagant lifestyle. But the royal family did not pay him generous allowances out of generosity, but out of obligation to get Balmoral and Sandringham off him. In contrast, Harry personally owned relatively little wealth, and there is no reason for the royal family to be obligated to pay him an allowance. What do you think about Harry and Meghan's frozen careers? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.